The Olmecs are candidates for the Jaredites. They have the same time period, 2250 BC down to 300 BC. The Olmecs are the first civilization in the Americas, all of North and South America, that had a written language. By civilization, we're talking about like a written language. We're talking about uh, a highly structured society, not a chief and a medicine man and nomadically wandering around. We're talking about buildings and structures and with uh, people with uh, highly diversified skills in a, in a highly developed society, all right? And structured. America's first civilization is around the Gulf of Mexico and they call the Old Mech. Right? And I think that's really unquestioned. So, so we haven't found any other civilization per se in North or South America. We found bones that date back, but in terms of an actual civilization. So we haven't found yet a written language in South America. You find four hieroglyphic languages in Mesoamerica. Four. We haven't found any real evidence of uh, extensive, uh, like you would have uh, scrolls or writings. And Bonnie, maybe you can help me on this, uh, if you would. Uh, Vanna White, I call her. <laughs> This is a codice, okay, or a codex, singular. And what is a codex? Uh, it's the Mayan book. And what's fascinating about these books is that there were hundreds of them, and they keep the family history of the people. Their birth date, their death date, their marriage dates. They had a very accurate calendar system, more accurate than our own. And they were using the zero probably as anciently as the Chinese, and maybe even longer. Uh, so some believe they may have created it. Anyway, Bonnie, this is a codex. Why don't you walk over there with it? It's 84 feet long. Uh, the, the, You're going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way? Okay. Written on both sides, if you were to strain it all the way up. So I'm not going to do that. I'll just take a little bit here. And you'll notice that uh, there's that writing, that hieroglyphic writing. This is called the Nuttle Codex because the man that did the translation of was Nuttle. And so they call it after him. But uh, eventually they're going to get named for the city that they reside in. So there's a five of these that survived. But I want to tell you what happened. So this is a, a codice. And notice how, uh, and I'll give this to you, Bonnie, and you're going to have to do what with it? What are you going to have to do? Fold it. You're going to have to fold it. Alma chapter 12, verse 1. And we did unfold the scriptures unto them. I believe that's literal. I believe they literally unfolded their books. Now, when uh, let's go back to the 1500s. Cortez is there. Not only is Cortez there, but a man, a very zealot priest, his name is Diego. Um, uh, da, 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 da. It'll pop in my head here in just a second. Um, no, no, Diego de Landa. Diego de Landa. His name is Diego de Landa, and he became the bishop of the Yucatan and the uh, head of the church in that area for the Catholics. And when he came, here's uh, now this is a, a book written uh, by him, translated, by the way, it's translated with notes by William Gates. But this is actually now uh, de Landa's book. Diego de Landa. There are several Diegos, I get them mixed up sometimes here. But uh, this is Diego de Landa. He now tells uh, here what, it was written in Spanish, and he's uh, the, the old Spanish, and, uh, but it's translated. Some old men of the Yucatan say that they have heard from their ancestors that this country was peopled by a certain race who came from the east, whom God delivered by the opening for them of roads, 12 roads through the sea. If this is true, all the inhabitants in the Indies must be Jewish descent, because the Straits of Magellan, having been passed, they must have spread over more than 200 leagues of territory now governed by Spain. This is, this is a priest and a bishop in the Catholic Church in the 1500s, right after Cortes is there, that comes over to convert these heathens. And so what he does, he said that they, uh, for example, he said, I, want, I just want to mention something about their uh, writings. He talks about their writings. And he says their written language, he says they're really highly evolved. He shows pictures of it and things kind of like that thing I was showing you there. And he makes the statement, we found a great number of these books and these letters that these people had. And since they contain nothing but superstition and falsehoods of the devil, we burned them all. <laughs> we could do genealogy work today off of those records. Because it gives the birth and the death and the marriage dates and stuff on it. And we can translate that because we can use the different calendars. We can say this is the, and uh, this month, uh, they had 13 days uh, in their calendar system, and, and they have different kind of calendars, but I just tell you, we can translate theirs into our time period, and we can do that. So when they have a monument, you'll go down and see a monument, and it'll give a date in our Latin-based languages. It'll give us a date there. It'll say 13th of January, but if we go to the Mayan calendars, the corresponding date we can also find. And so 
isn't that interesting? That all and so in the where you currently go, if you go to Merida, it's spelled with a D, but it's a lot of people say Merida, but it's Merida or like Merida or something. But uh, it's actually Merida, and Merida uh, was the place where at that time Diego de Landa set up and burned in one village alone, one village, five thousand of those records that had all this family history on it, because it's of the devil and foolish traditions. Wow, whoa, what do we, what, what we do with those records today? Well, they're translating them. They just finished in 2011 uh, translating the Dresden Codex. And uh, so they, uh, they, it's really kind of exciting because in the Dresden Codex it says uh, there was an earthquake and the earthquake buried a uh, city in, uh, down by Lake Isabel today. Uh, that's the name of the lake today, Lake Isabel. And that this sunken city had in it uh, this probably uh, what we would be equivalent to several millions, several hundred millions of dollars of thin gold plates with hieroglyphic writing on them. And it's a German scholar that uh, translated it, and so he, he says, I'm going to go there and find it. Well, he's been negotiating now for the last two and a half years with the government in Guatemala because they can't agree on how much they can let him keep. And he said, well, I'm not going to find it for you if I can't uh, keep, you know, X amount or whatever. And so they have this great decision. Well, if I were a local body... Uh, my, my theory is that the locals, while they're arguing about it and talking about it, they're diving. Sure. They're trying to find it. They're trying to find it. And it, doesn't, it isn't the Book of Mormon gold place, but it shows that they wrote... Gold yeah, isn't it? Anyway, so that you find evidence of writing on gold plates that was laughed at in the days of the Prophet Joseph. He laughed at. 